Welcome back to the show. My name is Michael Lynn, and this is the MongoDB Podcast. I'm super excited to welcome our guest today, Kenny Gorman, head of streaming products at MongoDB. And without further ado, let's bring Kenny right on to the show. Kenny, welcome back to the podcast. It's great to have you on the show. How are you today? Thanks, Mike. Yeah, I'm great. Doing great. Excited to chat. Yeah, terrific. So last time we spoke, we were taking Atlas Stream Processing to private preview. I want to get to where we are today and what kind of changes and what kind of experience that's been for the product team. But before we do that, for folks that are not familiar, maybe explain what Atlas Stream Processing is. Sure. Yeah, this journey, I'll just tell you in story format, this journey started a couple of years ago. And um, I came on at MongoDB and we wanted to build out stream processing capability. And the use cases um, that were starting to appear and the problem points and pain points that were starting to appear had to do with data in motion or streaming data. And so that's data for use cases where, where timeliness of the data matters. Things like IoT sensors, where we're trying to measure and, and react to certain things, certain conditions very quickly, where the value of the data is diminished the longer that it goes on, the, the older the data gets. Things like manufacturing, real time manufacturing, things like marketing, even actually marketing systems where they're trying to give you deals or, or incentives within applications. Just a whole host of use cases, modern use cases that need this kind of fresh and timely data. And customers were struggling with the document model and, and wanting to use the document model within streams, but not really having a good interface. And mm. a couple of years ago, we started to have this idea that, hey, uh, MongoDB, first of all, is a great platform for doing this with a MongoDB database. We're obviously document, the document model as, as our core. And the aggregation framework within MongoDB, if you're familiar, is a pipeline operation. And so it gives you different stages within a within an operation, and those stages are very they're analogous or very they work very nicely with stream processing. So you can put different stages in there, and you can build your computations and do stream processing in a very Mongo esque way. We already had the primitives to work with um, the document model, and we already had a huge user base that was using this. So it seemed like a natural fit from the get go, and that was where we that's where we picked up. Yeah. So Atlas Stream Processing surfaces to the developer through the, the same idiomatic tools that they're used to today, right? Through the aggregation framework, through exactly. additional operators. Yeah, you nailed it. Exactly. So what we did was we said, let's try and leverage what developers have been doing for, for many, many years. And let's let them continue to have the tooling that they've always used for many, many years. Okay, cool. So we did that, and um, it's sort of interesting as we went through this, and I'll talk about this as we get further into the conversation, but um, as we went through the, the private preview, we actually had customers just take their existing aggregation statements and say, hey, can you help us make this into a streaming aggregation statement or streaming pipeline? And to be honest, all we had to do was change the source from like a database source, a, a collection source, to a streaming source, something like Kafka. And then we just change somewhere to put the data, like a merge operator at the end, into the collection. And you know, boom, we have a continuously running pipeline that can process data from source to sync, and it runs the same business logic or same computation that they that they had before. So the mental model, the leap uh, customers had to take from one to the other was was very low, and that that seemed to really help adoption. Yeah. So for folks that aren't using stream processing today, what are some of the reasons that they might want to look at? at stream. Yeah, it was interesting when we when we first started thinking about this, we obviously I, I told you a minute ago all the different use cases that are mm -hmm. you know, involved here, but customers actually had they have those problems, but they also have a new another class of problems which was just kind of like data manipulation problems. How do I build this report and have it constantly updated or how do I take data from my main system and move it to my secondary system? for uh, offline use or something like this? And how do I keep it up to date, constantly up to date? And so Atlas Stream Processing fit in really nicely there. You can just jump into Atlas. You can go ahead and create a processor. You just define your Atlas source and you say, oh, this collection here, it'll read the chain stream. You can aggregate the data and, and maybe do some filtering or whatever that might be, some math or something, and then push it to another collection within Atlas. And it's super seamless. It just takes a few seconds. And that continuously runs in the background. And now you have these up-to-date collections across your enterprise. So uh, the little handy wins were, were where people started to get started and started to get familiar with it. And then they said, okay, I see what I can do with this. This is powerful. Let me use it for some other things as well. Yeah. So 
you've been in private preview and you've mm -hmm. obviously had some folks using it. What are some of the lessons learned and has the product changed? Yeah, this is a good question. So I had like these worries. I think the whole team kind of shared them, which was when we went into this, this notion of um, using an aggregation statement for stream processing, we honestly were wondering, hey, will customers, you know, get it? Will they, will they, you know, trust us that this is a good way to do this within, because we're, we're MongoDB, we're known as, as being a database and, you know, streaming data and data in motion is new surface area, frankly, for, for us. And we just wondered if customers would take that leap with us and join us in seeing how cool it is to, to manipulate data in this way. And I think the, the, largely the answer is yes. Uh, customers really found it to be handy and, you know, like kind of obvious, like, oh, geez, that's simple, cool. And, you know, that really goes in line with what MongoDB has always kind of stood for in terms of like developer interfaces and, you know, being fun to use, that kind of thing, being powerful. Now the, the, you know, the responsibility is on us to release the product and, and do it in a way that we really are cerebral about the primitives, about the things underlying it that are super important, like late arriving data or data that's malformatted and putting that data into something like a dead letter queue. Um, all that kind of functionality, uh, like watermarking and checkpointing, all the kind of things you have to do to release a mature stream processing product. Um, we have to have those in there as well. So that's been a lot of the stuff that we've kind of been building underneath and in the background. And a lot of the area we've been putting in um, a lot of our engineering time and resources to kind of build out and do a real high quality, you know, real high quality job, of course. Mm. Well, I'm excited to get my hands on it. And speaking of getting my hands on it, how can folks get started today? Right. Great question. So we are going to be moving to public preview. So you can just jump into Atlas. You'll see the tab that says stream processing. Go ahead and click on it and you can start provisioning instances and you're off to the races right away. It's super easy. Oh, fantastic. So the types of data, we talked about some of the use cases and uh, some of the changes you've made. What can folks expect going forward from the product? So good question. A lot of the work that we've done early on with engineering was to ensure, like I just said a second ago, that we had proper primitives. And in the stream processing world, there's there's a number of nuances and, and underlying server technologies that have to exist in order to make it a reasonable solution for you. I mentioned things like handling late arriving data, things like checkpointing so that when the, in a processor had a failure, if it restarts, it picks up where it left off. These types of, these types of constructs. Being able to do an aggregation, uh, a window aggregation, say, and saving state for that window so that that computation, if something were to fail, it can pick up where it left off, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So building out the core components for doing that, the data storage paradigm, the checkpointing paradigms, those were all the things that we had to work through and design and, and figure out. But now that we have those capabilities, we can, we, we're, it's, it's a lot easier to grow from here. So on, on public preview, we will have a good notion of, of kind of a phase one notion of elasticity. So as you add more jobs to your, your instance, it will continue to grow and, and service those jobs. You don't have to continue to provision hardware or anything like that. And then when you reduce them, if you if you were to run a stream processor and then you were to stop running a few of them or whatever, it would it would scale back and it would it would reduce. Mm. So that's great. Coming down the road will be the ability to run a single processor in parallel. That's not something we'll have right away. Obviously, the managing state in a in a um, in a shared mechanism like that is much more in a distributed system like that is much more difficult and tricky. And to get it right, it's going to take some time, but we are working on that and that is coming. So it's things like that. It's not like um, day one, it will be trimmed down and, and not useful. Day one, it'll be very useful, very handy, very powerful, very fast. It'll have these kind of core constructs that I talked about in terms of recoverability and scalability and things. And then we plan on adding more regions, more cloud providers as we go. So, and, and that just will continue to be a cadence that we work on over the over the next year or so. Mm -hmm. And then just building out the core functionality. So day one, it has a, a lot of the operators, all, almost all the operators that are in the aggregation framework work, mm -hmm. including time series, integration with time series collections and other things. So that will be early on. And then over time, we'll continue to build on that framework, adding more and more as we go. So mm, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about some of the challenges you faced as you as you roll this product out. I mean, it's a it's a massive advancement for the MongoDB Atlas platform. What kind of challenges have you faced along the way? Right. 
Yeah, no, this is a key one. So it was interesting. We knew the team, the, the, the product and engineering teams that came together to work on this were largely hired just to do this. So there's a lot of talent in on the team that has experience in the industry building, building stream processors and stream processing systems. So MongoDB, in my opinion, did a great job in, in getting a good team together to think in, a, in new ways around this problem set. One of the things that we knew early on was that developing stream processors is very tricky. So, you know, it's very opaque. It's hard to know where, what's in my stream. Where is the data? What format is it in? What's my experience going to be? And kind of the state of the art in the industry is, is a little bit frustrating. It's very difficult to um, inspect and have opaque you know, uh, uh, and observability around stream processors. So what we did was we, um, we, we, ch- we took that challenge head on and we developed a, a, a development paradigm where you can use dot, it's called dot process. So you can call um, dot process on a, on a stream processor and it'll show you right there in the terminal what it's doing and the, it'll give you a look into the data. So this gives you a really, really nice kind of development paradigm to, to uh, iter, you know, in an iterative fashion, build your stream processor. And that kind of matches how we were seeing people build pipelines. You kind of start with a source and you go, okay, what's in my collection, you know, foo. And you're like, oh, okay, uh, here's my timestamp and here's my measurement. And I want to perform some math on it. And I want to do like an aggregation. And then, so you, so you'll, you'll set up a source and you'll look at that data you say, okay, cool. And then maybe you, you, you know, you go a little bit further, you add your aggregation or whatever it might be. And then you say, okay, I need to filter a little bit more. That was too much data, or I need a wider date range or something like this. And so that interactivity, that ability to iterate and build it is something that quite frankly, SQL's had for many years. And it's hard in a stream processing paradigm to kind of replicate that. So dot process was our answer to that. And then once you get your processor defined, you can just go ahead and say start and it'll run like a normal stream processor. It'll go into the background and run continuously forever. Yeah, so it's it, it's almost like a debugging step, I guess, dot, dot I'm dot sorry, pro- what was the? Dot process, yeah. Dot process, okay. Yeah. yeah. So not like an explained plan where you're introspecting the the statement itself, but actually looking at the data. That's right. Yep, you got yeah. it. And along those lines, there was another another kind of stumbling block that folks had, and that is, Oftentimes, data is, is is missing or malformatted or, and this is just normal stuff, like for streams. Streams are a little bit different than a database. A database mm-hmm. almost always has some sort of more rigid structure. But in the real world, streams, oftentimes, the data will just be messy. So I'll give an example. Like one of our first customers way back when was a would do trading of virtual currency. And they had to aggregate from very various different virtual currency providers, and the data was very much different between them. And so, a missing field, a zero field, a empty array, or an array with a zero as the first element, all meant the same thing. Mm. And so, from a data quality perspective, that's a disaster. Like that is a mess. And so, you see this in the wild all the time. These kinds of quality issues and it really leaves developers out in the cold because they have to go write some sort of logic to disassemble the streams or somehow fix the data. So what we did was we have kind of a two-phase approach here. Number one is we have a stage called dollar validate. And so you can put this in your pipeline and you can specify schema if you'd like. You don't have to, but you can also specify rule sets for fields. So you could say, you know, if it's an empty array, then then here's what we'd like to present. Here's like what we'd like to project to the next stage. And you can have that kind of logic it right in your processor, including things like regular expressions. Very, very powerful stage to help data quality, data cleansing. Other solutions with SQL have to have a preprocessor, right? You have to present a, a strict type to the system with Atlas Stream Process and you don't. So that's, I think, a huge benefit. The other thing is you can also set up a dead letter queue. And so if you're getting data that's invalid, has invalid timestamps, is late arriving beyond some threshold, you can press, uh, you can push that into a dead letter queue, which goes into MongoDB collection, and then you can like decide what to do with that data later. So you could maybe reprocess that data with a different stream. You could, you know, put it in a collection and just inspect it and delete it like a log, or or whatever worked for your, your for your use case. So we won't spit data on the floor. There's no like data loss here. It's like we're always going to do the kind of the right thing uh, with the data where we can. And the dead letter queue and dollar validator like super powerful tools in that to that end. So I'm just trying to envision how the developer crafts this validation. Is it 
part of the stream aggregation pipeline or is yeah. it is it through some interface in atlas yeah no it's it's right in the stream processor itself and it it works just like dollar validate works in the for a collection so mm -hmm. if you're if you're used to using it in that way it works for streaming as well and so that's great and so in a in a, in a typical pipeline you might say dollar source is say kafka and then you may say dollar match on events greater than some date or something. Mm -hmm. And you might say dollar validate. I want to look at things that don't have a particular format for the date type mm -hmm. of thing, a further filter. And if they miss that filter, I don't want to throw them on the floor. I don't want to miss them. I want to stick them into a dead letter queue so I can look at them and see like, oh, what was missing or what was bad about that date so I can fix the source system, that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they, you use them in concert in your pipeline, right? In line with anything else, it can live at various positions in the in the stage. So if you were outputting or projecting data, and you wanted to catch where there might be an error with your own logic, you could use Dollar Validate there too. Hmm. Yeah, it sounds super yeah. handy. Yeah, that's yeah, very powerful. Hi, handy. Yeah. So folks that are listening, if you want to learn more, there are links in the show notes. Make sure you check those out. There's links to the product page to the documentation page and usable examples in our developer center. So make sure you check those, those notes. Kenny, what else do we need to share about Atlas stream processing? I think that's it. We covered it from pretty much from soup to nuts. We're excited to get it in customers' hands, start using it for you, your use cases and using it right within Atlas. And yeah, just excited to get out there and, and hear from you what you're using it for and, and, and what you love about it and, and to help you on your journey towards data in motion with, with MongoDB. So how do folks get that feedback to you? Yeah, so the community forums are, the, are the, probably the best mm -hmm. place right now. So there's communitymongodb.com and there's a streaming section there and you can just hit us up with a note and happy to go back and forth and, and chat about what, what's ailing you or what you might want or <laughs> what's awesome or whatever. So that'd be great. Yeah, terrific. Well, Kenny, thanks so much for coming back on the show. I look forward to having you back talking about all the great changes in the product in the future. Awesome. It was great. Thank you.